early on Sunday morning, and I thought that I would give you a little update on something we picked up. We did a small animal sale yesterday. Um, it's a flea market, small animal sale, a lot of chickens, turkeys, exotic birds, as well as, uh, you know, like the little game hens and stuff like that. And then some people have pigs, goats, um, pretty much any smaller livestock. Uh, and a friend of mine helps run it, so... Occasionally, we like to go do that, and I had a bunch of baby duck, Muscovy ducks that I need to take. Well, the sale was really slow. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of traffic, so I really needed to thin the amount of baby ducks that I had. So I wound up trading with my friend for some quail. So I have two different kinds here. I think those are just the regular Caternics, and I think these are the, the Jumbo, the Texas Whites, or whatever they're called. Um, so we got six total, and they're all male. Uh, I guess he had picked up a whole bunch somewhere for a really good deal at an auction, and most of them wound up being male. So I traded him so that we can raise these, and we will be able to process them and try quail and see if we like it. Um, they're remarkably calm for quail. Uh, usually quail are kind of jumpy jumpy, but um, from what I've seen, and these quail are actually pretty calm. So we're just feeding them a nice little uh, chick feed that's non-medicated. Um, I put a branch in there so they have a branch to kind of hide under and they're just going to hang out here for a few more weeks and then we'll process them and see how they taste and we'll update guys, you guys on that. Okay, so we did sell several jars of jams and jellies yeah, we did. at the sale Hold and Gabe got something else. You want to go and get it and show it? I don't it? know if I can catch it. Well, she's not even loose yet. We don't have the thing open. So Gabe's going to show you what he picked up at the sale. Where are you? Yeah. She's gonna be the smallest bird in there. Let's find you. Where are you? Hello? Gabe, she's right there. Where? Up there. Under the roost. Come here. Oh, the mister. <laughs> We'll be back, back after these messages. So who is that, Gabe? This is Stacy number two. Stacy number two, because Stacy number one accidentally, well, not accidentally, she passed away because she was a really old chicken. So now he has a young pullet that is a little rumpless, supposed to be a rumpless Americana. Um, I haven't looked up what the breeds look like. To see, you know, so if she is truly one, but she's not even laying yet. Um, but she's absolutely adorable and she's very sweet. She's very sweet. And she's very sweet, and she seems to be getting along just fine with everyone else. Hi, guys, welcome back to Haywire Homestead. I know it's been a while since I put on a video, I had aspirations for starting a five minute Friday, and I still plan on doing it. Um, I actually had a video all done up for it and just didn't get it edited and that was two weeks ago. So I've been slacking, so I'm sorry about that. But um, today I'm canning potatoes. Uh, I don't have a root cellar, so storing potatoes and onions and those kind of things is not something that can easily be done here. I've actually got some onions that are starting to go bad. So I've got to sort through them and I'm gonna dice those up and actually uh, sh uh, put the, use my food saver and then put those in the freezer as well. But I thought I'd show you a little bit about how I can potatoes. So what I've got here is a pot of water. Oops, pot of water with some potatoes in it. Um, I have more in the sink that I'm washing up. Uh, what I do is I wash them up, I trim them up, I cut them into, I try to get them in uniform size. So about one inch cube or it's about one and a half inch cube actually. Um, so I try to make them uniform in size and then I'm gonna boil them for two minutes. I don't wanna boil them until they're mushy and all done and I can mash potato them. I just wanna get them cooked a little bit and I drain the water off of them. And then we will use hot boiling water. We'll fill the uh, mason jars with them and then we'll add hot water to them. Half teaspoon of salt. We're doing quarts because we have a, a family of five and most of them are boys, so they like to eat. Um, and then we will go ahead and pressure can them and I'll show you guys how long when and what pounds of pressure and everything that we have to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting these up.
Okay, so we just went ahead and finished up boiling the potatoes for two minutes and I'm getting them in the jars. And I just kind of shake them down a little bit, just wiggle them around. And you wanna have them just under this lip here so your half inch head space and then we're gonna cover them with hot water. And then we will put them in the canner. I have to make a correction. I went back and double checked my ball blue book, which if anybody's beginning canning, get you one of these. These are great. They give you ideas and they show you tested recipes um, of how to process vegetables or even, you know, for soups and all kinds of things like that. So here's the one for the potatoes. And I thought it was a half inch headspace. It's actually one inch head space, half a teaspoon of salt. It's uh, 40, for quarts, it is um, 10 pounds of pressure in your canner for 40 minutes. Uh, pints are 35 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and get these set up and get them in the canner. Another important step when you're pressure canning is that you want to make sure you just take a damp paper towel and wipe the rim, okay? Also inspect, make sure your jars are clean to begin with. I usually just sterilize mine. I run them through the dishwasher um, and then I just pull them out. They're nice and hot. They're ready to go. And then you wipe the rim. Also make sure, especially if your jars are a little bit older, you check them for nicks, cracks, or anything like that to be sure that there's nothing that's going to cause your jars to not seal. And then we'll pop the lids on and put the rings on. You want to just place your lids flat on the jar, tighten them finger just lightly. You don't have to make them really tight. And then we're going to pop them in that canner over there. Our 40 minutes are up. I turned the heat off. Now we wait for the pressure to go down. So I've got a pressure gauge on this. And once it goes down to zero and the pressure's all the way released, I can open the canner, take the jars out, sit them on a cloth on the counter and allow them to go to room temperature. Um, and then tomorrow morning, I'll place them on shelves. I usually don't move them off the counter for um, at least 12 to 14 uh, to 16 hours. Um, that way I can make sure and I can double check the seals and everything before I place them on the shelf. I'm working on my onions. I already got my white ones done. I didn't have, we didn't gr get very many white onions. They didn't grow real big this year. So um, in the raised beds that we started this year, um, we used a lot of composted manure, but I think I need to add a little bit of peat moss to make the soil a little bit more loamy in order to get larger um, onions. My red ones actually did quite well. So this was the first year that I had more success with onions. And what I did with these was that I actually took them into the garage once I pulled them, um, trimmed off the tops and just laid them on my seed shelf in the garage um, and I let them cure and dry. See the, the skins are all papery. You know, kind of like what you get at the grocery store, right? Um, but then once I got them ready to bring them inside and I put them in a box lined with newspaper, I started noticing I was having a lot of issues where some of them were going bad. I think it's just a little bit too warm in our home. We don't keep the AC turned way down. Um, maybe not enough moisture could be another issue as well or too much. I'm not really sure. Um, but I'm getting some onions that are starting to do this. Uh, and then a couple were really soft and mushy. So I've got to do something with them because obviously I'm not using them up fast enough. So we're going to freeze them. So all I'm doing is I'm cutting the ends off. I'm going to uh, dice them up. And then we're going to put them in these bags and use our food saver um, to shrink wrap the or to vacuum seal them and place it in the freezer. I don't have a problem with um, doing these and then it, my, my freezer doesn't smell oniony or anything. Um, those bags work really, really well. Uh, so we're going to do that and then we'll get on with more potatoes. <laughs> 